Hi everyone. Today we are going to discuss the data link layer. So data link layer is the second layer in OSI reference model. So if we count from, actually we have to count from this to this. So this is one, two. So data link layer is the second layer protocol in the OSI model. And actually when any user is using any application program, that user is directly interacting with the application layer and application layer generates the data in response to the application used by the user and hands over that data to the presentation layer and presentation hands over that data to session and session hands over to the transport, transport to the network and finally network layer hands over that data to the data link layer. Now the data link layer job is to carry this information through all these different media types to the destination. So the packets handed over by the network layer to the data link layer are supposed to travel through this different physical networks. And these physical networks may be like copper wires, there may be microwave links, there may be satellite links, there may also be optical fiber links as well. So now this is the job of the data link layer that after receiving the packets from the network layer, it has to carry those packets through, through all these diverse media types. And uh, the data link layer has to facilitate the exchange of data over a common local media. So common local media means this. This So when we are talking about single medium, maybe like this, if you are taking like this. So from this point to this point, this is local media. From this point to this point, this is local media. So data link layer's job is to carry data from this point to this point, data link layer, and then from this point to this point. So this is called the hop to hop uh, transmission or node to node transmission. So we will discuss this point later on. So this is the job, this is, this is what does this mean. So this is the meaning of common local media. And the uh, data link layer actually provides the interface between network layer and the physical layer. So you see here we have this network layer and this network layer hands over this data to the transport layer and the transport layer then uses this physical layer to transmit the data from source to destination node. So these are the, uh, the, the major jobs of the data link layer. Then as we discussed in the previous uh, slide, that we have diverse range of local media types and device. So we have so many uh, different types of media to be used. So, and these medias can be like copper wire, fiber, or Wi-Fi, and we also have different kinds of devices as well, and the components as well. So for example, so from this user to this router, we have an ethernet interface, and then from router to this, this uh, dish, we have this serial interface, then we can have the satellite link, then we can have the microwave link, and finally we can also have the Wi-Fi link as well. And each media type may require different data link layer protocols to support them. So these are different, uh, uh, different media types, different media types, and these different media types may need different data link layer protocols and in this way, we have different media, different devices, and different protocols which are to be supported by the data link layer. So data link layer allows the network layer to access and use the media using a technique called framing. So what is framing? We are going to discuss in this slide. Actually, what happens when the network layer hands over data to the data link layer? So Data link layer receives the packet from the network layer, like this. And then the data link layer adds header and trailer on top of that. So this is the header and this is the trailer. So this is the packet received by the network layer and the data link layer adds trailer and header on top of that. And this process is known as encapsulation. We encapsulate the packet received by the network layer and by adding header and trailer. And this is called frame. So the, after adding header and trailer in the packet, we call it a frame. 
and with framing actually with, with the help of framing data link layer allows upper layer protocols to access the media upper layer protocols means network layer so by using this framing techniques this data link layer allows this network layer to use any any media which is available the available with us so we have different media and data link so sorry network layer can access these type of media by the help of data link layer so what is the use of creating frames you see when uh, data is uh, handed over from the network layer to the data link layer data is converted into into binary form data is converted to, converted into zeros and ones and then they are transmitted to destination in streams of waves so you see data is being generated or the data is being converted into zeros and ones and uh, we are continuously receiving these zeros and ones so these zeros and ones are being continuously transmitted i hope you are you can see this so it means there there should there should be a mechanism at the destination node so the destination node should have a way to to find out that where is the start and where is the end of the frame so in in this continuous uh, stream of uh, binary numbers we need to have some mechanism to find out the start and the end of the frame so this this information is provided in frame so here again uh, this is the frame which is created by the data link layer it has three parts header packet and trailer and in the packet we actually have the data and in the header part this in the header part we have some inf inf important information for example we have the information about the frame is start it means this indicates that a frame has been started this is quality field and we also have address and we have type so i'll go and i'll uh, i'll go um, through these all fields later on and then we also have a trailer part in that frame so in that trailer part we have error detection and frame stop and this all actually these all fields are represented by the binary number so for example this start frame start is shown by a specific bit pattern so there will will be special bit patterns which will indicate that the a uh, frame has started and exactly in the same way in the end there will be specific bit patterns which will indicate the stop of the frame so this frame start and stop indicate the start and the end of the frame so these are the fields and this is the this is their job and then we have address field and this address field actually is the address of the nodes between which the communication is taking place for example we have a mac address or the nic address or the physical address in our local area network and then there's a field of type so type field is there to 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 indicate that which packet is contained in the frame you see on this network layer we may be using ipv4 maybe ipv6 maybe using spx so at the data link layer we add that information into the frame that whether the frame is carrying ipv4 information or ipv6 information or ipx information so this type field indicates that and then the data data is the packet sent by the network layer so this is the this is this part is the data which is which was uh, given by the network layer to the data link layer and then we also have a error detection mechanism for so we add some extra bits in the frame and these bits are there to help find out if there are some errors during the transmission so from one node to another node if there are some errors these bits will help to find out those errors this is the job of error detection and then the data link layer also provides hop to hop delivery hop to hop delivery means from point to point or from node to node for example in this case if you see this is one one hop and this is second hop and third hop so data link layer is responsible to to forward data from this point to this point and then from this point to this point and this point to this point so what happens during transmission of data frame travel through many intermediate devices and for example 
intermediate devices like a router performs the following job. So every intermediate device performs some specific jobs. So these are the intermediate devices. And in the case of router, these functions are performed by the router. First of all, when the frame arrives, this router, so this router first accepts the frame from the medium. So from this medium, data arrive or the frame arrives and this router receives them. And then this frame checks if there are some errors. And if there are errors, the, uh, the router will discard that frame and it will not process that frame further. But if there is no errors, then the router will decapsulate the frame. Decapsulate means once the frame has been received, so this is, this is the frame. Decapsulation means this will remove the trailer and header from that. And then, then router looks at the next hop where this router have to forward. So router has received that data from this part and now the router has to forward that frame to the next hop which is maybe this this dish antenna. Then what the router does, a router re uh, a router constructs a new frame as per the requirement of this part or the this medium. And this creating new frame is called encapsulation. It means Router will add header and trailer again as per the next media and forwards that to the next destination to the next hop. In the same way, this node will forward the frame to the next this one, and this will forward to the this one, and this node will forward to this one. At each and every point, this decapsulation and in, 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 encapsulation will occur again and again until the message has been received at the final destination. And the data link layer also uh, controls the access to the physical media by using different methods, different media access control methods. So for example, what happens? So this is a, for example, this media is there. There may be multiple users using the same media. So media access method actually uh, defines that who is allowed to access or who is allowed to transmit using this media at particular instant of time. So we have uh, different access methods in, in data communication. For, for example, we also have a CSMA that is stands for collision sense multiple access and collision detection. That means if there is a single medium and if multiple users are using, then if all of them will try at the same time then there will be collision. And after that, if this is the case, then all the uh, nodes have to wait for some time and they, they have to try it again. So I have a separate video on that. You can go through that. And we also have the CCMA, CA. This is for Wi-Fi, wireless. And then we also have the token ring. So these are different access methods by which a medium can be accessed at the data link layer. So access means to get control of the medium. It means if I have the access, means I can access. If someone else has the access, then he can access the medium. And to access the medium, we have different protocols or different rules which are there, which are just listed here. And then an access is required, access to media is required for putting the frames on and off the media. So when you want to use the medium, it means you need to have access. So access is required for that. And different MAC methods or different media access control methods may require different MAC cards. So we may need different cards. For example, in our computer, we have NIC card, but in the case of the station antenna, we may have different um, uh, adapter or card. In the case of some other devices, we, we may need different network or media access cards or adapters. For example, this router is connected with different physical networks. So this router and on this side, this is connected to Ethernet. And on this side, this is connected to serial. So we have serial connection. So on this, both of the interfaces, we need different cards so on this side and this side we may need different cards with different rules and regulations so data when this router receives the data on this interface by using ethernet then it will have lan trailer and lan head
header. So local area header and local area trailer. And when this router will forward the frame to the next hop, then the frame will have when trailer and when header. It means wide area header and wide area trailer because this serial connection is a wide area connection. So you look at the difference. So the header and trailer are actually dependent on the media type which is being used to transmit the data. If this is on the local area network or this is on the ethernet, then we use length header and length trailer. But if we have the when or serial connection, then we use when header and when trailer. And if this happens at every, every, every segment. This will happen at every segment until the message is received at the final destination. And the next job of the data link layer is to find out the maximum transmission unit. So each media type have limitations on maximum transferable data. So maximum bits per second a media can carry. These all media has limitations. For example, fiber is faster, but the UTP is not that much faster. So every medium has the limitations. And the data link layer determines the maximum transmission unit or the capacity of the medium and conveys this information to the network layer. So, so that the network layer should not transmit or should not, so this is a network layer. Network layer should not transmit uh, that much data uh, as, as, is, as, is, um, as is the availability or, or, or is this the capability of the segment so that the data link layer conveys this information to the network layer and network layer now will send a limited data so that the uh, medium uh, can carry that amount of data. So Ethernet interface, so we can have the serial interface. They both can have different capacity or different maximum transmission unit. So uh, as per that, that, the data link layer conveys this information to the network layer. And then is the implementation of the data link layer. So the, all the layers above data link layer, it means from this one to this one, they all are implemented in software only software is required to implement the functionality of all those layers. But for the data link layer, this is implemented in software as well as hardware. The data link layer is implemented in software as well as hardware. And this physical layer is implemented using hardware. So this is the data link layer implementation is software as well as, well as hardware. And sometimes NIC card holds both of the things, so physical, connectivity, they are the physical layer and half of the data link layer. And the drivers which are installed in the NIC car, they are actually the software. Then the sub layer of data link layers. Now to allow uh, um, simplification or to allow one type of frame to access different type of media, data link layer is divided into two parts. So what happens if we have a same frame, we say a frame, and if you want to transmit that frame using different media, then what we do, we, di we divide this data link layer into two parts. One part is called logical link control, and the second part is called media access control. Now, within that data link layer, the job of the logical link control is that this, this, Network layer protocol, uh, this holds network layer protocol information like IPv4, IPv6, or ISPX. So this allows multiplexing. It means by using the same frame, for example, this is the frame. Sometimes this frame will be carrying IPv4 information. Sometimes this frame will be carrying IPv6 information, sometimes SPX. So in this way, it allows for multiplexing. And this is the software processes which provide services to the network layer protocol. So the network protocol, and this, this provides the services which helps network layer. And this logical link control is also used for the flow control between the nodes. So to control the flow of the data, to control the data transmission rate between the nodes, this logical link control helps. And the second, layer that is media access control. 
that media access control actually deals with the addressing and frame delimiting. So addressing means the physical address or the MAC address of, of, of the node and the frame limit delimiting means this, this indicates the start and the stop uh, bits uh, are, are indication during the transmission. So this is the job of MAC or media access control. And media access process uh, performed by the hardware. So media access control handles these all processes which are performed by the hardware. And media access control also uh, determines that at one particular instant, instant of time, who is allowed to transmit and who is not allowed to transmit. It means it, it dictates the access to the media. This is the job of media access control. So these are the two layers, the data link layer. And this is the 